Good morning, gang. Happy Tuesday morning. You know, sometimes we, the prepper community, kind of live in our own bubble a little bit. And we have a tendency to think that there's a lot of people that are either prepping or not prepping. And we kind of draw a line. And you all know as well as I do that there's people that go completely crazy on it, you know, building bunkers and underground condos, like I was talking about that Dr. Phil video the other day. And then there's people that have what I have, and then there's people that have 30 days worth of food or, you know, whatever it is. And they all prep according to what their idea is. Hmm. So we really don't know. But if you open your eyes, you can kind of get an idea that people are worried about what's going to happen <clears throat> in the next six months, okay, between now and Inauguration Day. Now, I don't think we're going to have issues like Mexico had, where you had political candidates assassinated left and right. I don't think we're going that far. But a lot of people think we could easily turn into what happened in Paris over the weekend, you know, where... The communists won, well, they didn't even win, but the way their goofy rules are set up, they did, and they rioted it anyway, and, you know, the burning, looting, and murdering was going on all over the place. I don't know if we get that bad. We're not going to be that bad, certainly not going to be that bad across the country. There's probably going to be urban areas that are going to be crazy regardless of who wins in November. Because if the Democrats win, they're going to celebrate by destroying stuff. And if they lose, they're going to peacefully protest by destroying stuff. <clears throat> That's just the way they are. They are the party of violence to get their way. And when they get their way, they are violent anyway. Okay. But I noticed something looking around a little bit in the last couple of weeks and maybe you've seen it too okay now we know the stories of there's a whole lot more people gardening for example <clears throat> in the last couple of years ever since covid and ever since food has got crazy expensive and chemicals are getting sprayed on everything and gmo and all the uh stories about injecting vegetables with mRNA and all that. We know people have started doing that, so you pay attention. But I've been in a couple of places in the last week that were surprising to me. I was in Walmart about a week ago and saw two different people with strange carts, prepper carts, okay, cans and cans and cans of the same vegetable bags and bags and bags of flour and sugar now the sugar okay you know it's we're getting close to canning season fruit on the fruit trees stuff like that because i bought 60 pounds more of sugar <clears throat> to process a bunch of stuff all right but it's something i noticed and for the Preppers that are in my area locally, I've probably talked to all of them that are at least watch my channel and met most of them because the ones that are local have made their presence known, you know, said, hey, I'm up the street from you or whatever it would be. So I've run into them, you know, ran into another, uh, you know, somebody at Walmart that same day. Hmm was talking to him. I was at the gun store about a week and a half ago. I was having some armor's work done on one of my weapons, having a trigger replaced. And, and as I was in there waiting, talking to the guys, you know, as you usually do when you're in a gun store, you know, very conservative place as is. We were talking about the debate. <clears throat> and a guy walked in with his teenage daughter and wanted to show her and let her pick out 
a weapon. I was like, hmm, that was interesting. Good for him. And granted, I'm in Tennessee. Okay. I was like, okay. Worried about what could happen. You know, I mean, you could have that, you know, obviously this guy has seen the stories on the news of illegals killing and raping young women all over the place. Okay, it's time to get my daughter trained to protect herself, you know. I mean, unless, of course, we wind up in a situation like you had in Denmark where there was, I think she was a 17-year-old girl and some illegal was trying to rape her and she fended him off with some bear spray she had and now she's being she is being charged for assault let's pray to god we never go that progressive okay and then sunday <clears throat> we decided to go out to the gun range for a little practice try to get out there and do that once a month or so And as we went, it was kind of funny. Now, I mean, again, we're talking little gun range, two tables, if you will. I mean, it's just on public land, but targets set up at 25, 50, and 100, and you get out and get a little bit of practice. So we decided to go out. As we got there, there were two young men, I would say in their 20s, that showed up about the same time as we did. So, of course, we got to talking to him and everything. You know, one, of the, one of the guys, you could tell he had fired weapons before. I mean, he knew what he was doing. The other guy, it was his first time. You could tell. He had just bought himself his first rifle. It was a twenty two caliber AR. And he was the, the, his friend or brother who or cousin, <clears throat> don't know the relationship, was teaching him how to load it, how to rack it, how to fire it, how to zero it, etc., etc., etc. Showed him a pistol. Twenty-two year old guy, twenty-something year old guy. I'm not saying twenty-two. I don't know for sure, <clears throat> but showing him how to do this. Now, you're not going to think they're getting ready for deer season, because. You're not hunting a deer with a 22. You're not hunting a deer with an AR-15, regardless of what caliber. Could they have just been out for fun? Sure. Okay. Guns are somewhat of an expensive hobby to just have fun with. Okay. But he's learning. And as we were there on a Sunday in the middle of a state park, with a gun range that's very small. There was another car that pulled up <clears throat> and saw that all of us were there, and they turned around and left because there was no place to shoot. And then an hour or so later when we finished, as we were packing up and the kids that were in front of us were packed up maybe 20 minutes before we left, another car pulled in and two guys and a girl got out of the car, all with ARs, to go shooting. It's interesting because you start watching what people are doing. And you realize that people are on edge, <clears throat> that there is some tension, that people are wondering what's going to happen. And people are doing whatever they can to insulate themselves from any bad situation. Now, of course, I'm not hanging around solar generator stores or Harbor Freight or Tractor Supply or anything like that watching to see who's doing that. But I wouldn't doubt that there's more people that have bought generators of some sort. You know, hurricanes not supposed to hit anywhere near here. Okay, so it's not for that. But this is what people are doing. So when you think, hmm, I wonder if I'm doing the right thing, spending my, my money, my time getting this. And you all know something's coming someday. Nobody can pin it down on a calendar. Take a look around. Open your eyes a little bit. 
<clears throat> situational awareness. And just watch and see what other people are doing. They may not be doing everything that you are, depending on where you are. Canning jars will be sold like crazy, right? More and more. Every year, the stores around here run out of canning jars. It's normal. Live in the country. A lot of people grow food here. But if you see the same thing, say, in the suburbs or in the city, and all of a sudden there's a guy in front of you who's got four cases of canning jars in front of you, and you're, you're in... I don't know, downtown Omaha, Nebraska. Hmm. Now maybe he's got a garden. Or maybe he's just putting stuff back. Maybe he went to the farmer's market and got a bunch of stuff. People are thinking. Like I said, I don't see us having a situation like Mexico. I can certainly see a situation like Paris. Absolutely. There's no question about that. And anybody that doesn't believe that just needs to look at Portland or Minneapolis or St. Louis or anything and say, yeah, it can happen here. We're not alone. A lot of people practice a gray man strategy, even ones that don't consider themselves preppers. They're not telling everybody what they have for good reason. It's common sense. Y'all don't know everything I have. I mean, obviously I'm on YouTube. You recognize me. Okay. We're all on a list. We know that. Okay. You went in and bought four cases of canning jars or you went in and bought a thousand rounds of nine millimeter. You're on a list. Okay. So there's no worry there. But your neighbor doesn't have access to that list. You know, BLM, Antifa don't have access to that list. Just watch, and that'll tell you what the consensus is from the public. When the public's worried, the public's usually right. That means something's coming. We all know there's, there's going to be some sort of event between now and the end of the year, whether it's before the election or after. Some sort of false flag and is it going to be in your backyard or not what's going to happen could it be another train derailment we just saw one i think it was in north dakota over the weekend could it be something like you know the east palestine deal could it be something like another oklahoma city could it be something like another 9 11 maybe not that big maybe it's something like the las vegas shooting or any of these nightclub shootings. But we've let in somewhere around, I don't know, one and a half million, low estimate, high estimate, five million military age males into this country. Who better to blame when something happens? I mean, remember, for years and years and years and years, Nobody was ever told what happened to John F. Kennedy. And 60 years later, it came out that the CIA was involved. You know, we heard the Lee Harvey Oswald tumbling bullet, grassy knoll stories, and all this, all this stuff that just didn't add up. We might see the same thing. Is it 200 miles from you? Is it 2,000 miles from you? Or is it two miles from you? Watch what people are doing. They're telling you something's coming. If everybody feels it, it's coming. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep stocking. Keep stacking it to the rafters. Keep your head on a swivel. Watch what's going on. Because the masses are rarely wrong. And if everybody's sixth, sixth sense says something's coming, listen to it. Pinball out.